Hey guys, I'm bored and slash x slash is shitty tonight so how about we share our real life paranormal experiences, call it nope if you want but I'll start, I have a few. Be me with friend. He's driving me home from a fire and get together with friends. Not really in the spook d type of mood so it wasn't imagined. Side note I live on a dead end road that at the time had no working street light. We pass the short ass bridge that leads to the turn off into my road. Notice, what looks like, a girl on what looks like either a motor scooter or a bike, seems to be wearing a large coat. She slash he rides into my road right as we turn into it so we lose sight of her behind the trees. Turn in and there is no one, and we just saw her literally two seconds before turning into my road. We look at each other and he asks me if I saw that too, at this point we are stopped in the car. I say yeah that fricking girl just disappeared or some dumb stuff, at this point I get the chills bad. Stopped where she would have been, we look around using the headlights to check if she went in the thin woods nearby. Nowhere to be found. Drops me off after we briefly make horrified faces at each other. Ever since I dislike walking down my road alone and it's a minor legend among my friends. Also the friend who brought me home died just the past summer, just as a side note. Second one that I just remembered, not sure what exactly it was in retrospect, but looking back just remembering this it kinda gives me chills. Be me like somewhere around 14-ish. Doing some stupid assignment for school that I had to type on my parents' computer. Typing like a dumbass slow as hell when something happens. The computer starts typing on its own, not like the keys but it starts writing shit. I really don't remember what it said but it was nothing weird or scary. It was mostly completely random but it asked me how my day was and I responded with alright or something dumb. Thought it was maybe a key logger or some hacking shit and didn't know what to do. Looking back I don't think it was because I could type to while it was, but it would just backspace if I interrupted. I reset my computer, worrying my files would be deleted. Nothing ever happened like that again and my computer had no ill effects. Still don't know what the hell it was to this day but regardless it's weird and kind of freaks me out in retrospect. Third one. Be 16-ish. Girlfriend at the time tells me about some house that is supposedly haunted that she went to with a friend of hers. Says they went inside and heard noises like stuff moving and creaking so they both freak out and run outside. At this point, according to her, they ran out of the house and a high-pitched horrifying screaming started coming from it. They ran the frick away until it stopped and walked home, crying in fear. I called bullshit, and seeing the house was apparently off of a trail near my house, had her try to show me where it was. She kept trying to get me to go back because she had a feeling of dread, told me she'd suck my pee pee if we went back. I said no because I wanted to check it out and I know she'd suck my pee pee anyway. Finally get to the trail off of the main trail that leads to the house. She starts sort of freaking out and says she wants to go home now. We hear movement and she says she saw something in the woods near where we were, it was a large clearing that the trail went though. Given because I lost interest and she's bitching, plus knew it was just raccoons being assholes or something. Plan to go back at a later date. Didn't smoke but wanted to walk that night for some reason. Plan with two friends to venture to the abandoned house and investigate for the frick of it. Fat friend decides to bring his oddest cousin because he's into paranormal shit, I don't care because the more people the better. Eventually it starts downpouring and non-fat friend decides to go home right as we enter the trail leading to it. It's around midnight. Me, fat friend and oddest wait for the rain to go away and luckily it does after a little bit. Head past first trail, had black top while the other one was a dirt trail and much darker. When we enter the second trail it starts to get a little weird. There is a bike path along the main part of the second and we keep hearing sounds of movement up there keeping pace with us. 
ignore and continue past it to the trail leading to the house. Eventually, get up a hill that we can faintly see the area from. At this point, start hearing what sounds like multiple people running around us out of sight, the hill was surrounded by woods besides the path. Otist starts freaking out and practically crying. While me and Fatty immediately get down on the ground. Eventually Otist follows and we listen. Hear a faint but apparent scream coming from the abandoned area and look down, seeing some weird glowing stuff on the ground. Kind of frozen in fear at this point, with the movement and screaming, but eventually turn around and signal Fat and Adi to follow me back down the hill, sprint back to the main trail as the scream becomes a faint wail slash cry. Freaked out. We walk to the main road at the end of the second trail and talk about what just happened and eventually go home, no longer in shock from not knowing what the frick was going on. Sorry about the quality of my map but I figured it would help for the story lol. Me and the friend who went home went back a few times but nothing else has happened worth mentioning there. Let's see as far as spooky stuff goes, I really haven't had something happen to me but something came up last weekend it goes as follows. Brother is moving into his new house so I have to go help him move and watch the kids for the next three days till him and his ex can work daycare out. Showing me around the new house. In an offshoot room of the garage. There's a canning room. Big deadbolt and padlock on the door. The deadbolt is kinda half hanging on like the screws are in the wall but are loose like it's been pounded from the other side. He unlocks it to show me this massive badass canning room with lots of shelves. Step inside it instantly gets freezing but I don't mind and walk in. He tries to turn on the light bulb but it just flickers and goes out with a loud pop. I jokingly say too spooky for me and with that we walk out and he shows me the rest of the house. About a day later or so he has some friends over to help move the heavier stuff. I'm inside watching the kids at this point and he's showing them the garage. After we're done moving everything his friends are getting ready to leave and as I'm walking over to them and my brother to tell them goodbye I hear them talking to my brother about a bad spirit that was in the canning room and that one of his two friends didn't even want him to open the door, his two friends are brothers by the way who are both pretty in tune with the spiritual, I look up at my brother and he has sort of a grim look on his face. They leave. Later come to find out that the previous owner died in that room. Later find out that he didn't tell either of them this. Don't believe in that type of shit but god damn I had to sleep in that house for four days or so after those assholes ruined it for me. Still too spooky for me. I'm from Ontario. Apologies for this being rather long. Seven years old at a friend's. Stay up super late, for seven year olds. Watchin' horror movies like Grown Ups. GIF. We start, as kids do, telling ghost stories. Run out of ones that we've heard of, so we start making some up. Tell him one about a man who stalks the woods around where we live, two of us live only a few kilometers apart. He doesn't age, and can pass through shadows been around since engine times. Feeds on lone hikers now, used to slaughter small native tribes. We decide, even though we know we made it up, to go looking for monsters in the woods. Bring his German Shepherd with us, being seven and not entirely retarded. Get about two kilometers from his actual backyard, we're starting to get really in the woods. Dog starts whining, turns back. Kinda weird, that dog's fearless. Keep going for a bit. Flashlights start flickering. Loud crashing sounds. Slightly poop pants. Dog flies out of nearby brush. Thank God, just the dog. Stands, just stands in front of us, getting in our way every time we try and go by. Starts alternately whining at us and growling at something ahead. We try and keep walking, don't want to turn back yet, 
dude, your dog is weird. I finally realize that the dog can't block us both. When my friend, let's call him Jason, just realized I didn't name him yet, goes to get by his dog, whose name is Bear, I dart forward as well. Dog can't stop us both. Grabs Jason by the sleeve and pulls him forcibly into the brush, I turn back, make sure he's okay. Shit dude, you okay? All's well, dog won't let me up though. Spend some time trying to calm down bear. Finally, dumbass dog lets Jason up. We keep walking for a while. Weird sounds, the typical forest at night stuff still. Dog gets all weird again. Literal repeat of before, will try and stop us individually, but when we both go to get by at the same time, grabs Jason over me. Turn back again, same thing, calm down dog. Keep walking some more. Whole time, we've been making up more and more messed up stuff about the man. Spooks all wildlife, tracks his prey, sometimes for days likes his flesh raw, and tender, implying young because it's scarier as we're kids. The track we're on loops for a long way around the woods, going through some places we've never been before, even in daylight. Start telling stories we've heard of the lone cabin that's out here, no one's ever seen someone go in or out, but there's often lights on. This part is actually true, but for the sake of the story, I won't explain. Dog's been acting more and more strangely. Usually very loud, inquisitive, and playful, even when we go out at night, used to do similar things quite often when staying at his place of vice versa, but we've never gone this far into the woods. Eventually dog acts up again, this time much, much worse than before. Sounds like he's crying. Nosing us the opposite way. Try and get past. Literally bowling us over every time one of us tried to get by. Same strategy as before, wait until Jason's ready, and run. Dog knows what's happening this time, already running at Jason. Grabs him and yanks him down, goes for me. I manage to trip on a root at just the right moment and flail my way by. Runs back to Jason and actually starts dragging him back down the path. Oh well, he'll calm the dog down and catch up on his own. Been walking for a while, maybe more five minutes, but definitely less than ten. Gone around a few bends, can't see Jason, or his light. Fork the trails. Decide to wait for Jason, don't want to get split up. Sit down under a large tree. Have a great idea I'll turn out my light, wait for him and make him shit his pants. He'll have to walk all the way back like a little pussy. Go behind tree after turning light out. Hear a rushing, rustling noise. Hey, guess there's another dog or something. Better climb the tree in case coyotes. Hear yipping nearly as soon as my hands are on the bark. Yank myself up as fast as possible. Climb into the center of the tree, hidden by foliage. Rustling gets louder. An adult is running down the path from the other direction as fast as he can, longest hair flying behind him. Oh man he's really running, better be careful, there's a lot of roots around. Trips. Hear a crack. He broke his leg. Probably just sprained an ankle. Starts crawling then gets up, still moving as fast as possible. Hear sobbing coming from the man. Move to get down tree, try and help. Hears me in the tree. Head whips around. Whispers so I can just hear part of what he said. Up there kid, there's, out there. Oh fug what? Probably talking about the coyotes, maybe there's a lot of them tonight. Go to ask if he needs help. Immediately shushes me, tells me to shut up and get further into the tree. Do so because adult said to, middle of the night. He lets out a long sigh. 
Guess you found me then. What? The wild bastards are here? Nope. There's another guy on the path, must have just gotten there, walking slowly, can't really see him, too dark. They both were coming down the same fork. Second guy says something, but I don't understand at all. Nothing like any language I'd heard up to that point in my life. First guy starts trying to hobble away. Second guy laughs, walks at the same pace after him. Suddenly, first guy starts running faster than before. Second guy says something, sounds really freaking weird, and crouches down. Starts sort of half jogging, half running after the first guy, sort of like a woodsman's lope if you know what that is, but faster. They turn the bends, I can hear the first guy snapping branches and crunching leaves and dirt. Wait. The first guy? What about the second, the one who was talking weird? Look down. Shit 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 Fugno. He's right beneath me, looking up at me. Says something in that weird language again. Oh God. Oh god the guy we made up was real what the fug, I'm gonna die please I'll accept Jesus Allah Buddha anything don't let him eat me. He just stares up at me and smiles. Creepiest smile I've ever seen, guy smiles like a goddamned shark, all teeth, all hunger. I am going to die. Accept it. Make my peace, hope that Jason's okay. Crying. Snot running down my face, but I've accepted that I'm going to die. Guy just sits down at the fork in the road. Says something that actually sounded like English, but I was too busy sobbing to understand. What, mister? Try to contain my tears of impending death to hear the man, the last words I might hear, but miss the first part anyway. Guy's voice was like a rusty razor, all rough and raw, but it still was sharp somehow, so it was hard to understand. Down here, young, ling or thing, couldn't be sure, not hunting for babes. Tonight. Chuckles like a sand slide ha ha ha. Pats the ground beside him. No way, I've seen enough movies, read enough fairy tales he's going to kill me anyway. He gets mad. Get down here or you'll be caught and eaten. Well Frick, okay, I guess if he's going to do kill me either way, may as well not make him mad. Climb down, he's still at the fork across from my tree. Pats the dirt beside him, obviously wants me to sit there. Come, young one, I swear on my own name, I shall not harm you. Read enough fantasy books for this. Fricka ing evil magic monster, know how to deal with that. What is your name? I manage to stutter. Says something like Mlghulai. Repeat it after him. Yes, young thing. You swear. By my own name, I do. Say it all. By my name, Mlghulai, I swear no harm shall come to thee, child. That's three times you swore. Guy smiles again, that creepy freaking smile. Clever enough, it seems. Ask him who he is. I never promised you answers, only that I wouldn't hurt you. His speech seems to be getting better and better each sentence. Maybe this monster is one of those misunderstood ones. As I think this, he adjusts the coat he was wearing. Notice the coat is made of some sort of weird fur, and is old, a bit dirty. The shirt underneath is like nothing I've ever seen. Almost looked like one of those doormats, or a boot mat, but all fabric, not rubber. Has all kinds of things hanging from a belt around his chest. Hard to see, but my mind immediately populated it with bones, feathers, and a very weird looking knife. He notices me staring, and asks. What is it, young one? He's been pretty polite, and I did get him to swear three times, so I'm getting a bit braver. 
Your knife, it's, well I couldn't see it so well. I trail off, not sure where I was going. Ah, yes, the knife. Would you like to see it? Hold it even. Oh okay, if nothing weird's going to happen. His eyes squint shut, can tell he's a bit annoyed. I swore no harm, child. S sorry. No matter, it is good you are suspicious. Pulls the knife from his belt. Thing is made from goddamn stone. Whole goddamn thing is one big block of stone. He smiles as he hands it over to me. Thing weighs a ton, holy hell. Would you like that, child? The knife. You do not accept gifts from the Fae you do not accept gifts from spirits you do not accept gifts from anything you don't understand, ever. No, s yes sir, I wouldn't want to take something I wouldn't be able to treat properly, I'll stop actually typing in my stutters, but trust me, at this point it was taking me a good 30, 40 seconds to get a sentence out. He smiles that messed up smile again. Again. Proof you are a clever one, take not gifts from those you don't understand. Right, but now I remember it's also a great insult in a lot of stories. Well, I couldn't take it without offering you something in return as well. We'd be at an uneven trade then. Ah, but you have nothing I want, that you can afford to give, do you? Probably not but no one is going to freaking believe me if I don't come out with something. Well, maybe we could trade for something smaller then? I have this, in a fable, this being the flashlight. I don't need your false light, but a story is always a great thing. I will trade you a trinket for your tails, but be quick, for I must leave soon. Okay, that sounds good to me, my story is about these woods. Go on to tell him most of the made-up story Jason and I invented. He chuckles at the end, asks me how I know all this. Well, I made it up. You tell a strong story, boy. You have earned your trinket. Pulls a bead from his shirt, presses it to my hand. His hands are cold. Cold like the ground, or the rock he was leaning on, but the bead is colder. Kind of large, but can't see its color in the dark. I must go now, but you have won this, and my respect for a storyteller. You will not be harmed in these woods. He leans in close, oh what is that smell? Smells like, cooking and laundry and those jars of stuff in the pantry. It's nice. Suddenly, it's bright, really, really bright. Middle of the day bright. Must have fallen asleep waiting for Jason, dreamed it all. Right? Especially when I can't find the bead. Walk back to Jason's, he sees me from the kitchen, runs outside and hugs me, crying frantically. I thought you were dead, I thought the man got you, I saw you and him in the forest, but Bear wouldn't let me by, he dragged me all the way home. I have a few weird, and more true, stories at Jason's, as well set at a few other places. Be with cousin of 15 years. He suddenly puts an egg between his buttocks. Nope away. Never seen him since. So I don't really like to tell the story because most people wouldn't believe it. I don't blame them because it sounds like the plot of some shitty horror movie. But my friend and I didn't realize until after we left that it could possibly have been paranormal, and I'm still not convinced, but here's my story. Sorry for no green text. Be in college. Hear about some old abandoned house in the woods behind the campus. Apparently it's where African American staff members used to live before integration. Being a history buff, I'm very excited to go visit it. My friend, who's a first-year photography student, wants to come with me and take photos. We plan a trip and go to the old house the day after a storm, 
so it's all muddy and dark and creepy. We have to walk about a mile down this old dirt road, but we finally get to this ramshackle abandoned house in the middle of the woods. The house is filled with old stuff that dates back from what I would assume is about the 1940s. There's an old piano and some books about African witchcraft. Super cool. I start poking around and my friend is taking photographs of the stuff in and around the house. Suddenly this chubby little boy appears. It was strange because I didn't see or hear him come out of the woods but he was just suddenly standing on the front porch looking at us, as we are in the entryway. The kid is about 10. He says something like, hey, what are you guys doing here? In a really grave, serious tone. I guess my buddy was sort of nervous, as I did most of the talking. Hey man, we're just students at the college. We're here working on a photography project. Not trying to steal anything or break anything, we just wanted to have a look around. He relaxes visibly and says oh, that's fine. We up just didn't want you to get hurt. My dad owns this land. He says we would get in trouble if someone got hurt here. He let me borrow the car to drive down here, just to make sure you were okay. For some reason I don't even stop to think how the hell did he or his dad know we were here. I just say something like oh, I understand, it's a cool place you have here. That's cool your dad let you drive the car, he must really trust you. The kid and I make small talk about the area for a while, nothing really remarkable, just talking about how it used to belong to the school and there's a lot of old items around. The kid is probably about 10 to 13. Meanwhile, my friend is snapping pictures of this dead crow in the front yard of the house. I'm wishing this talkative kid would go away so I could properly explore. Eventually my friend tells me we should go. Kid insists we don't have to go if we don't want to, but my friend interjects that we have to get back and eat dinner and study. Okay, whatever. I convince my friend to walk towards the road instead of back the way we came, towards the school, because it's a nice day and we can walk by the old cemetery off the road, she can snap some photos there, etc. The kid says he's gonna stay there and hang out at the house because he likes it there. On the way towards the road, my friend is talking about how weird the kid was and how he made her uncomfortable. She says something like he snuck up on us like a freaking ghost. I just think she's being paranoid and ignore her. When we got to the road we walked past this old wreck of a car, it's probably from the 1970s, and looks like it was just rammed into a tree, and left there to rot. I ask my friend if she wants to photograph it, she starts freaking out and saying remember? The kid said he'd driven here. Do you see any other cars, Anon? Managed to convince here that that's the stupidest shit I've ever heard and she's just being over imaginative. She says I can check it out, but she doesn't want to shoot it. I walk towards it and stumble over one of those little makeshift road crosses for people who died in accidents. I'm kind of starting to nope. I walk up to the car and peek inside. Nothing in there, just a wrecked old Chevy of some sort, windshield all crushed in. LOL I'm such a pussy. Start to walk back to where my friend is standing. Decide to check out the little cross thing see if there's a name or a date. Nope, it's too old and rotten to make out any writing. Then I noticed it. A scrap of an old blue flannel shirt that was either wrapped around or lying at the foot of the cross. The freaking kid was wearing the same kind of blue flannel shirt. Disbelief. Pick up the shirt. Holes and tears all in it but it looks like a boy's size large. Trying to stay calm but my friend shrieks is that his freaking shirt, Anon. Power walk the hell back to the school, don't stop by the graveyard that day. Neither I nor my friend told anyone about this for a long time. We made several trips back, but nothing spooky happened other than a general feeling of sadness and unease. 
I want to try to find the pictures she took, but I think they're just close-ups of debris and they don't have the kid or maybe even the house in them. Be between 16 to 17. Visiting cousins with a friend in upstate VA. Middle of winter. Make bonfire. Making s'mores and hot dogs. Group decides to go for a walk. Five minutes and find some shitty house in the woods. Inspector Gadget.jpg Find door to cellar in back. Open it and go in. Smells like something is dead. Hear whispers. Me and friend leave because screw it. Waiting in wood for cousins. Cousin comes back without others. Where's everyone else? Back there. Friend and I walk back towards cabin. No come this way it's quicker. Points to sketchy ass path through the woods. Friends is skinwalker fanatic. Tell him he's a bitch and follow cousin. Cousin stands behind us even though he's the only one who knows the way. Fifteen minutes later. Dude where is your house? Turn no cousin. Look at friend. Hear loud ass screeching noise. Ok now I believe. MOV. Haul ass back to old house then backtrack to cabin. Cousin and friends around fire. One person missing. Where did you guys go? We waited for you and P went looking for you. Not with us not with them. OFW they want to go back in the woods and look for him. Ghost Girl has become a bit of a combination legend and in-joke among my friends. The preface won't be in green text, but I'll attempt to green the encounters that I either recall or was told. It all started when I was really, really small. Three or four, my little brother had either not been born yet, or it was the summer after he was born. Being so young, and being in the country did fantastic things for my imagination, I made up all kinds of things, one of which was a young girl I'd play with out by the garden shed. What we'd play would change all the time, but according to my parents, she'd always be, according to me, dressed in a beautiful white dress. I can remember what she looked like, but perhaps that was a distant cousin at a wedding. The distant cousin would have to be from a later time in my life, however. Forgot about her as children do with their imaginary friends once they get real friends. Poor Jason, he was the one who I was with that night too. Sleep over at Anon's house for the first time. Brand new friend. Woo. Let's play all day, then sneak out at night and play more. Brilliant day, made swords from sticks and fought each other and made up shit all day, did the same when we snuck out at night. We're up on one of the few hills in our area not covered entirely in trees, can see for quite a ways. See a small figure, in white about half a kilometer away, down the hill by the now broken down shed, tree had fallen on it, bad winter storm knocked it about, etc. Cool, someone else outside, let's go play with them. Run down the hill toward them. We get there. No one. Mention it to parents in the morning, they explain about my imaginary friend. Hey, weird. About a year later, a month or two after the earlier man in the woods story. Outside, by myself, just being a kid, looking at stars with my shitty telescope. The garden shed is just barely visible from the back of my house. I was sitting in the upstairs dining room with all the lights off standing on a chair to look out the windows at the stars, it's the best view I had at the time that was still inside. View still shitty. Go out back door for better view. Concrete porch is shit view, giant ass pine tree blocking the sky. Walk to a small hill right beside my house. No trees. Hell yet. Hill makes a triangle with my house and the old shed. Happen to look across, and see through trees a white figure. Run over to investigate. See her about five meters away this time, 
run after her. Never catch up, she disappears in the small pine forest behind the shed. Tell my parents about it, again. This time, they're obviously uncomfortable about it, think my insomnia's starting to make me a bit nuts, I suppose. Must have been bad for even a little kid to notice. Don't want me going outside so much at night anymore. Do it anyway, because the hell else am I going to do when I can't sleep? See her a few more times between then, around 8, and 10. One time, I caught up to her. She was in a clearing that I don't remember, and as I was obviously all over my property and the surrounding area, I thought I'd know it all. She whirled around, smiled at me and waved. I asked her name, and she laughed and said something I couldn't hear, or can't remember. After that, I didn't see her for years. Be about fourteen, with friends. Camping out in my backyard in autumn. Campfire? Time for her scary stories. There's about ten or twelve of us. Most of them have either known me long enough they've heard some of my stories before, or have actually experienced something with me. Tell them the previous story. No one but Jason believes, and he's telling me to shut the hell up the whole time. He actually leaves the fire, and goes back to my house, that's how upset he is. Comes running back as I'm about two-thirds part through, wide-eyed. Guys, you're not going to believe this. The others think we set it up, we were best friends, and were known to work together to scare a friend or two. We'd never tried anything one this many people, though. Assumed he was just going for it, play along because this could be legendary. Ask him what it is, yada yada. Figure he'll say he heard something, or thought he saw something. Just follow me dude. I get up to follow. Everyone else laughs says we're not getting them this time. Try to tell them we're not just trying to scare them. Don't believe us, threw marshmallows to get us to lay off. Well, not worth it then, I turn to go sit back down. Jason grabs my arm, I turn back and he's staring me dead in the eye. Trust me man, I need someone else to see this. He's actually scared, I can see it. He's not anything close to actor material, he's always the one who hides and jumps out, which is why it was so strange to me. Okay man, I'll go with you. Since I'm going even without everyone else, they get curious, and follow us too. They're loud, we've been telling scary stories, trying to stay brave. Jason spins around and hisses at them to shut the hell up or go back. Completely unprecedented for him, they all shut up. We go up the same hill Jason and I saw her from years ago. There are two people down there this time, they're nearly glowing white. Everyone else thinks it's some sort of prank on our part, start congratulation us on how well we pulled it off, they were pretty freaked at first. They start going toward them, I go as well, but Jason grabs my arm again, looks me in the eye. I think the other one is you. What? He pulls out my shitty old telescope, where the hell did he even find that? Passes it to me. Freaking hell, it's hard to see, but that definitely looks like a small boy. Look at her, trying to see what she looks like. Suddenly, she seems to realize she's being watched, looks up the hill. There's no coverage up there in the fall, in summer there's at least really long grass. Sees us easily, I see her face as she turns. Biggest, happiest smile a kid could have. Starts walking toward us. Where our freaking friends are. Yell at them, get over here, idiots. Lose track of her yelling. Jason points her out, she's closer. Little boy doesn't seem to notice, is still playing in the trees. We start freaking out, this is the first time she's come to us, and there's another one? 
yell and freak out until our friends come running back. Tell us we're dicks. Apparently she was right in the trees all of a sudden, and laughing at them. After that time, I've only ever caught glimpses of her, until about five years later. Forgot she existed for two years at that point, except as a joke with my friends. Big, ish, camp out, around 30 people over. Getting drunk as hell, some drugs were going around. Little high, pretty drunk. Remember all the ghost girl stuff? We're practically right behind her shed. Try not to panic, you're a big boy now. Look around, check everyone out, move closer to the fire. A friend from the 14-year-old experience is there, call him Steve. Dude, you remembered, didn't you? Yup. Oh man, be cool Steve, don't tell everyone, don't want to be a homo in front of everyone. He's quiet the rest of the night. Until about three in the morning. Starts screaming incomprehensibly. Fug nibba possessed. Nah, dude, he's just tripping, right? See flash of white in the trees. Not a fun party, after that. Semi-related, but one friend has never seen her, but several times gotten laid in slash beside slash near her shed. We call him Ghost Girl's Bitch. Okay, I grew up in what was an extremely active house. I'll start with what backstory I have on the land slash house and then start on the experiences my family had there. Background Land in my family since around the mid-1700s when my ancestors came over from Germany. House was built in the 1970s. Large house off the Appalachian Trail in the Black Hills region of MD, pick related, is house. Before house was built it was my great-grandfather's Dahlia Garden for 50 plus years. House is about 1 to 2 miles from Bucketsville, MD, not paranormal, but yet, Blair Witch Project turned THW town on its head. Experiences in my bedroom, second floor, formerly my mom's bedroom. TV would turn off slash on in the middle of the night. Sometimes, I would remember getting out of bed and watching whole shows that never existed. When house was first built, family had to stay in a hotel because the closet was infested with beehives and millions of bees. As long as I can remember I knew someone was watching me from the hill outside window. Never had the nerve to look, but I knew exactly what it looked like. Remember waking up and seeing a man slash monster thing leaning over me with a severed head floating next to it. Sitting on the toilet, home alone, see a large man walk by, think oh my grandfather's home, I was like seven so it was no big deal. Get out of bathroom, nobody home, ten years later, my sister comes to me freaking out, having seen the same man from the bedroom, across the hall from the bathroom and describes him as a big, tall, Indian man in a head dress. I had never told her about seeing him, since I had long chalked it all up to having an active imagination. This happened to me about two months ago. For the sake of the story, the car is a 2012 Mitsubishi Lancer. Be in my friend's car. Be driving home, going to drop me off turn into the road that intersects with my street. Insanely thick as hell fog ahead of us, just lingering. WTF. For some reason roll up all the windows and lock the doors. Get to a red light in the middle of the fog. Tell my friend if I tell him to that he floors it and runs the red light. Hear someone trying to open the back doors on both sides. Both of us hear it. Dude floor it. Now. Run the red light and don't stop till we get to my house. Both of us stay there all night. In the morning there's dirt on both the back door handles. So this happened around 8 years ago but only recently has it scared the living shit out of me. 
be me about 11 years old. Me and friend interested in capturing ghosts on camera and audio. Live in a village which is renowned for being haunted. Decide to take our Walkman up to the local graveyard. Walk around for hours asking stupid shitty questions and finding the creepiest spots. Nothing happens so we head back to friend's house as I was staying over that night. Friend puts tape on the speakers while we sit playing the PlayStation. Audio recorded lasts about three hours. Tape playing in background, we aren't taking much notice. Woman's voice comes across clear as day. Mutters something like willow tree. Literal tears in my eyes, I'm shitting one that bad. Friend and I decide we'll look for the tree in the morning, when it's bright and not scary and stuff. Next day. Go back to graveyard. Looking for a willow tree but can't seem to find one. Give up and decide to ask the vicar who tends to the gardens every Sunday. He says he's not sure, but reckons there might be one right at the back in the other field. We go look and sure enough there's a willow tucked away in the corner. One solitary grave placed behind the tree. Holy shit. We get the walkman out and start asking questions again. Take the tape back after an hour but there's nothing caught on tape this time. Lose interest after a day or two. Now, back in the 90s, a schoolgirl went missing in the village after she got off the bus. Nobody saw her again, but a bloke who owns the main pub in the village got arrested for her murder and sent down, although the body was never found and he never admitted to it. This is the part that messed me up big time. Be me eight years later, now. Haven't spoke to friends since we left high school. Get a message on Facebook from him asking if I remember the Walkman and the grave etc. Tell him of course, seeing as that voice is literally ingrained into my memory. He tells me there's a big investigation into the body of the schoolgirl due to new leads opening. It's all over the local news. Read on website that a grave is being exhumed as it's believed the murderer had managed to dump the body in an open grave. Ask my friend to go see which grave it is, as I don't live in the village anymore. He goes down, and sure as can, it's the grave behind the willow tree. All cordoned off by forensics and police force. Literally shit my pants and can't decide if it's just a massive coincidence or not. It never really bothered me when I was younger. Yet. Yeah, the voice was scary as hell, but I just shrugged it off after a while. It's only recently with the whole police investigation, that it's really bothered me. It's almost as if the girl was asking to be found. Still brings tears to my eyes and gives me the chills when I think about it. So I'm sitting on my front porch, smoking a cigarette and enjoying the lovely spring day when a cute little brown bird a peculiar one which I've never seen before, flies over to the white pine just in front of me, hops over to the end of a branch as close to me as it can get, I'd say a little under 10 feet away, and starts bouncing around on the branch, cheeping and giving me this crazy inquisitive look. I was really perplexed. I thought to myself whoa this bird is really checking me out right now. Naturally my brain goes in one direction and what if this isn't really a bird, yet a being in the guise of a small bird in order to serve as some sort of spy, or in order to observe. Clearly fantastical. So I devised a test. I softly, yet firmly spoke I know what you are. The bird stopped bouncing and was literally taken aback. I mean they actually even leaned back as if in disbelief which was weird. Then the bird hopped over to the other side of the tree, looked over its shoulder back at me, and flew away. I believe a number of entities are observing and occasionally directly influencing my life. I've had a really similar experience before, myself. Also outside, smoking. In the summer, I was about 17, parents didn't know I smoked yet so I would go off into the forest and hills, with a sketchbook or novel. Sitting under the trees, 
smoke in one hand pencil in the other. Little rabbit comes up to me. Stares at me. Comes closer and closer. Figure it was just curious, I'd been there for a few hours so the wildlife was getting used to me. It comes within arm's reach. Start crappily drawing it. It actually looks at the page, then back at me. Sits back down. Start getting paranoid, remember skin shifter stories my uncle told me. Stare straight at it and say. You know if I finish this, you'll serve me now. It jumps up, terrified, lets out a rabbit scream, if you've ever heard one of those, it's utterly blood curdling. Falls over itself trying to get away. The gnome story is rather short, but really strange. Going on an RV tour around Ontario with my family. Go to Peely Island. Some native kid I met there tells stories of the small ones to the tourist kids. Go out to the woods with my sketchbook. Been out there for a few hours. Writing and drawing shit. Small little old man walks by about 20 meters away. This man is maybe four feet tall. Wrinkled and wizened. Decide to draw him. Turn the page, accidentally tear it. The forest was dead silent. He obviously heard, has frozen like a bunny. Turns toward me. Smiles when he sees it's just some kid. Walks over, asks how I am. I'm good, just on a trip with my family out here. He smiles again, asks where they are. My don't tell strangers the truth instinct kicks in. Oh, they're out here somewhere went for a hike, so they'll be back soon. That's nice, you been out here before? No, it's my first time in these woods. You be careful, heard the stories about the gnomes? You mean the small folk? Yeah one guy who lives here told me a bit about them. The small man chuckles and tells me to watch out for them, they like to take small children away. Wishes me a nice day and walks off. I run to follow him, can't find him. Tell the native kid, he's a little freaked. Dude, you're lucky you came back from that. Pretty sure they were just messing a little kid about, though. Not really scary but I think I had one of those moments where you die and shift to a different reality. Can't remember what that's called. Driving and come to a four-way stop. Crossing intersection and all of a sudden car comes racing out of nowhere. All I see are bright blue lights inches from my car. Shut my eyes as I brace for impact. Cruise on through the intersection perfectly fine. The other car is nowhere to be seen. Have intense ache in my head and right side of my body. Pain goes away almost as instantly as it came. Drive home wondering WTF happened. I'll do Black Doge first because it's really short. Nothing happened overall it's just weird. Be 7th grade, hanging out with a different fat friend, let's call him John. Whenever me and John were out his house we'd walk through a half vacant industrial part as a shortcut to get to a gas station. One day when we were walking we saw a black dog trailing us in the distance. Tried to catch but it ran away. OK.JPG okay Few months later we are in the same place only with two other friends, Josh and Victoria. Josh is black, fun fact. Anyway this time we see the dog skulking in front of one of the buildings far away. Thing looks all freaked up from the last time, eyes are glowing. It stares at us and eventually runs away. John and Josh said they saw it again a week later. Fast forward to when I was like 15, three years later. At my house which is a good seven to eight miles from my friend's house, and it's late, but summer so it was just getting dark around eight. Looking off of my porch I see an animal sprint by like 100 feet away, it ran under a nearby street light and looked like a black dog. 
Last time one of us saw it was a year ago ish John said he saw it wandering down his road, but he was high so he might have just imagined it. 18, now by the way haven't seen it since. Not really afraid of it anymore, I just want to pet him slash her. I don't know if this was paranormal or not, but it sure freaked me out when it happened. Be me about 12 years old. Be doing homework at desk. Decide it's late and I'm tired so I put my pencil in the crease in the middle of the book, just like in the picture. Turn lights off. Get in bed. Trying to fall asleep. Eyes shut, thinking about random shit. Perfect silence for what seemed like 20 minutes since I got in bed. All of a sudden I hear the sound of the pencil slowly rolling across the book, across the table then dropping onto the carpet. Tap. Nope.jpg.png.gif.avi.mpg.mp3.og Pull covers above head and force myself to fall asleep, do so within the minute. I know you're all just thinking it was normal for the pencil to roll from that position, but it wasn't. The book was brand new so the pages weren't all bent to allow the pencil to move. It was firmly sitting in the middle, no freaking way it could fall from there all by itself. Alright, this ties into a few other stories, but isn't really that nope slash paranormal. As you might be able to guess, or maybe I've already stated it, I've had fairly bad insomnia most of my life meaning that a lot of the weird things that happen to me, I generally chalk up to sleep deprivation, unless, of course, I have some form of evidence otherwise. Go nearly a week without sleep in high school. As the days drag together, I start forgetting when I am, respond to things that happened ages ago, or forget who I'm talking to. I also, by the fourth day, am saying extremely out of place things. My friend finds this hilarious. Brings tape recorder to school on the fifth day. By this point, I'm so out of it, I don't even remember getting out the house, or what I was eating. My buddy goes out of his way to make me talk to people, and records all of the ridiculous shit I'm saying. The seventh day, I literally collapse in my math class, fall right off the chair and into the person next to me. No nurse's office in my shit school, get sent to office. Falling asleep, my friend offers to come with me. Conversation with VP about going home, not feeling well. Don't remember any of it. Friend still recording everything. Get home, sleep for 15 hours. Call my buddy, he comes over with the tape recorder. Recording of day 5 is a complete mess. Saying things like pass me the bacon, I want more salt on my cookies. Absolutely stupid stuff that I would hate someone for saying. Get invited to his place for dinner, delicious Italian. After dinner, in his den listening to day 6. I had apparently taken the tape recorder from him and started speaking gibberish for about 40 minutes. Every word is made up. Once the recording of me speaking some sort of garbled, made up language is finished, there is silence, absolute silence for about 7 seconds. They're watching. What that is not my voice, nor is it his. Television turns on. Don't remember what the actual program was but the words that came over the speakers were. Now they know you know. Fuse blows. Sweet Jesus. The tape is still playing. Weird, high-pitched giggles. Don't worry guys, I'm just messing with the future. He never let me listen to day 7. I was like 3 to 5 years old and I decided to look out the window on a stormy night. I saw a bunch of construction workers, but they were made of pure blue, light, fire, I don't know. It was like blue electricity or something. Nothing really came of it. When I asked my mother about it, 
she just kinda ignored me like it was nothing. I'm positive I wasn't sleeping. You just reminded me of a time years and years ago, I was playing Diablo 2 and suddenly my CD tray opened. I closed it again, moved on, a few minutes later my character started walking around on its own, then a message popped up saying, I can see you. Creeped me the hell out at the time, turned out one of my friends put a virus on my computer as a joke. Anyone else still here? Here's a shorter one. I'm about 17 eighteenths. One of my friends is dating a girl, we'll call her Jody. Get invited to drink at her place, with a decently large group of friends. She lives in the middle of this shitty town I went to high school in, about 20 minutes from my house. Buddy picks me up, guy dating her, let's call him Shane, is in the car too. Just talking, killing 20 minutes. Topic, as usual, moves on to the paranormal. Shane suddenly super quiet normally he loves this stuff. What's wrong? Jody's place is freaking haunted as shit man. Middle of shitty country town, filled with suburbs. Haunted. Yeah right. Laugh at him. Later, we get to Jody's, and it is not a suburban, cookie cutter home. Drink, watch movies, play video, usual stuff with my buddies. As we get more and more drunk, Shane starts mentioning how weird her house is, she keeps trying to shut him up. Crazy loud thunk from upstairs, Shane flinches, Jody lets out a small scream. What's wrong with you two? Bit jumpy? That's from my brother's room. So? He's at our dad's place. Investigation time. No one will go with me. God damn it, seen too many horror movies for this shit. Decide they're all pussies, the lights are on, I'm drunk enough to manage this on my own. Make my way to the staircase. Shane stops me. Oh good, someone's not a complete wimp here. Hey dude, just in case take this with you. Hands me a baseball bat. Well, I guess if it's a raccoon breaking in or something, it'll be handy. Upstairs now, lights are off in the hallway, don't know this house, where the hell are the lights? Light switch found. Turns on lights in a room with closed door. Door is also locked. God damn it, well what's behind me? Another closed door. Open. Light switches inside. Are you shitting me? Flick them all, one by one. Light go on and off all over the place. Jody, at the bottom of the stairs tells me to. Stop messing around. Finally figure out which switch turns on the hall light. Call down and ask which is her brother's room. It's at the end of the hallway of course. Trying every door I go by, all of them closed but for one, turning on lights when the doors aren't locked. Get to her brother's room. Door slightly ajar. Prod open with bat. Fumble around, eventually find light switch. What unspeakable evil lurks within? A goddamn cat. Jody's effing cat. Got down and laugh at them. They insist that room is still haunted throughout the night. Jokingly, my other friends call me a paranormal investigator and ask to join the BPRD with me. Keep plying me with drinks, I keep inventing silly Scooby-Doo stories about Shane and Jody. This, for some reason is embarrassing and annoying for the pair of them. Get really, really drunk later. Since I don't sleep that often, I was one of the last to go to bed, other than Shane and Jody. Shane was out of school already, didn't have a job, so slept all day, was up all night. Being a dick comes back to bite me in the ass. They tell me the only room left, is the one empty one when I'm finally drunk enough to go to sleep. 
Guess which room? Brush my teeth, grab a glass of water, and head up to her brother's room. Wake up feeling fantastic the next morning, can smell bacon and coffee. Hop down the stairs, ask if there's still coffee. Those down in the kitchen stare at me, slightly horrified, which I put down to them being hungover, and me not. Man, what the hell was that last night? No idea what they're talking about, I guess the investigator routine? No, all that noise from the room you were in. What noise? Apparently there was loud banging, shouts, that were definitely not in my voice, mine is rather distinct. This went on throughout the house for most of the night. Until I yelled shut the hell up or I'll effing smack you. House was quiet after that. Assume it was just Shane and Jody, I don't remember yelling at them because too drunk. They eventually come downstairs as well. Dude, I don't know what the hell you were doing in Owen, Jody's brother, S room, but I've never heard them act like that. Jody is talking about spirits. Haha <laughs> Jody, you and Shane are lame. They were with people the whole time who had been woken up. Camera phone footage of them being freaked out, loud sounds. You can hear my voice about half an hour later screaming, shut the hell up, bitch, or I'll smack you at the top of my considerable lungs. Banging and whatnot slows down, then picks up after about five minutes. You can hear me say you think I won't. As though I'm right at the doorway. They all scream on camera. Noises stop. I am not the Ghostbusters, but I do a mean impression of Bill Murray. I have one, but it's silly. Be about twelve. Go camping with best friend and his dad. S'mores campfire fun tales galore. Super happy fun time. That night, I can't sleep so I leave the tent. Decide to walk around the camp area, other families are nearby so I try to go really quiet and slow to not wake them. Very bright full moon but so thick in trees that it doesn't light much. Suddenly hear a scream, like a woman's. It gets louder and more frantic. I freak out and run back to my friend's tent, dive in. Other people can be heard shouting about it. Slowly it dies down. Pass out. In the morning, while eating breakfast, a dad from another family comes over to talk to us. Says that last night his wife saw something black and small moving around the camp. She got so scared she began screaming. They calmed her down, looked around but couldn't find anything. Just wanted to warn us. TFW I was walking around. TFW when I became someone's scary experience. This guy again, trying for a much shorter one. Same year as last story, but before Shane was dating Jody. We, five of my friends and I, go up to my cottage in the winter. Anon, Shane, Jeff, Brad, Chris, and Jason. Cottage has no plumbing in the winter, pipes asplodon from frozen water is a bad thing. Piss outside, poop in outhouse. Winter, in northern Ontario, is cold. There's also a lot of snow, in case you didn't know. After driving for about twice as long as we should have due to idiots, bad weather and stopping for food, we finally get to my cottage. Well, the road that leads to the dead end road that leads to the gigantic driveway for my cottage. This is why we brought the snowmobile, thank God. Still spend about half an hour, 45 minutes hauling everything, breaking a trail, finding the freaking firewood, smashing slash digging firewood loose enough to use, and then finally getting a fire going. It's about 8 in the evening. Dark as hell. Need more firewood. Not a big deal, two man job, one dragging out logs, other to hold as much as he can carry. Anon and Chris go out. God damn, 
there's a gigantic deer. Easily seven foot high. It stares at us, then runs off. Damn, nature, you're cool as hell. Get firewood, tell other guys about the deer. That's cool, Shane says we should have brought a gun, could bag a deer. Jeff and Brad agree. Chris, not so much like me, has a native uncle, has heard of skin shifters. Since it was one deer, it's probably some ancient Navajo medicine man or some shit. Jeff and Brad laugh, Shane looks a bit uneasy. Well we don't have a gun anyway. Not a gun, but a crossbow. Brad brought a freaking crossbow and didn't tell anyone. What? You never know, dude. Brad and Jeff, despite our warning them, an oncoming blizzard, and the fact that they've never hunted a thing other than a quarter pounder while hungover, are determined. Get ridiculously bundled up. Splash pants over long underwear. Over that, snow pants. Giant boots. Two sweaters, a hoodie, then a winter jacket, those little fabric gloves under bigger winter gloves under workman's gloves. Scarf, toque, freaking ski goggles. They're going to kill this deer dressed like this. Right. Let them leave, they're retarded and will probably come back in an hour, whining and a little frostbitten, but having learned a lesson. Shane, Chris, and I wait up playing Caden and drinking. Regular breaks for firewood, no sign of either of the others. After the first game of Caden, we go out for more firewood slash a smoke. The storm's a brewing. All three of us really load up on firewood, do about two loads each. Realize that Brad and Jeff haven't come back yet, it's probably been about an hour and a half, maybe two hours. Yet. Definitely midnight, maybe one o'clock. Call for the pair of them. Our voices carry across the lake, and echo back to us. No response. Figure they've actually found the deer, and will be pissed we spooked it. More firewood. Bastards better not be too long, we need the help. Begin a second game of Caden, about halfway. Realize we're only going to have enough wood for a day, if that. Die if we're snowed in. No thanks. Go to get more wood. A lot more. Load up the old wooden toboggans we used to haul our crap up. Drag them back, one was so full we needed the snowmobile. Noticed it was almost out of gas. Crap, can't use that until Brad comes back, he drove and left the extra gasoline in the trunk, we couldn't find his keys. Call them one more time. Finish Caden, move on to Arkham Horror, which takes an hour or three to play. Next smoke break, can see the storm coming across the wasteland of the frozen lake. Call a bit frantically for the guys, no response, no time to look for them before it hits. Nearly done Arkham. Storm has really freaking hit. Windows rattling, can't see out of them, the chimney might be filling with snow, can see drifts piling up against bay windows. Really worried about Jeff and Brad, but we could die if we go out there. Climb up to loft, fortunately we still have electricity. Turn on the light up there, you can see that right across the lake on a clear day. Praying to Cthulhu, Superman, and the freaking Power Rangers they come back soon. Suddenly, massive banging noise from the basement. Oh fug, a bear wants in. Sneak around, on balcony above the noise. There's nothing there. Bear in the cottage. Sneak back in. Nothing. The other two try and sleep, can't. I definitely can't. We debate getting really drunk and trying to find them. Dude we could barely see our hand out there. Good point. Wait it out, turn on all the lights. Finally, about 4 or 5 in the morning, the storm dies down. Go outside, 
looking for two homos in red and orange. Can't find M looked for about an hour. Storm's building up again, have to head back. Just barely about to make it. Swear I heard something, shout for them, no response. Get back, closing door and bolting it just as the storm washes over the cottage. Wait it out, can tell it's getting brighter, finally, must be nearly seven or eight at this point. Storm is lightening up as well, thank God. Nearly passing out, exhausted from worry, alcohol, the changes from bitter cold to boiling heat. Knocking at the door. Leap up, unbolt door. It's Jeff, only Jeff. He's sobbing, his face, what can be seen, is bright pink. Probably crying from the heat getting to his extremities, shit doesn't feel good when you're frozen. Strip him down to his skivvies while Chris fills buckets with snow for a bath. Ask him where Brad is. With the dear lady. Well someone's freaking delirious trying to laugh it off, hope Chris didn't hear as he was outside. He definitely heard. Freaked out, after getting the second bucket of snow, left Shane to do it, went out for about half an hour. We're trying to keep Jeff from getting hypothermia and dying here, dude. Comes back, minus goggles, hat, and work gloves. Ask what the hell he did. Made a sacrifice to the forest. Not ten minutes later, Brad arrives, sends crossbow, completely fine. Can't explain what happened that night, at all. Just completely, utterly fails to remember. Also have a similar story. Be around eleven. Home alone playing runescape. Go out for a few minutes to feed the dog. Come back to the computer. My character is in a different location. Look at chat log. I had been asking people where they live. I still don't know what happened. Now I think back I'm worried maybe someone was in the house. Work at a large plant full of old people. Most have worked there 40 years or more. I've been there nearly five years. I work three shifts. In the past year or so I've gone into the bathroom to leave a number two. I sit to do my business. Many times I will hear the stall next to me open and shut violently. Once it did it so hard it made the shit paper dispenser fall to the stall floor. Many times I thought it was old fat bastards that I work with having a hard time getting off the throne. Thing is. There's never anyone at the sinks washing after. A few times I wasn't even in the stall, just heading into the area from the wash area. I watched the door to a stall slam open then closed then the toilet flushed. I just held it and went to another bathroom. I thought it was air creating a vacuum. Tried recreating the effect. To this day don't know why. Maybe it's a dead worker who had IBS. Be me. Coming home from a party. Be about 2 a.m. Listening to Black Dog by Led Zeppelin in the car. My house is at the end of the street. There is this big barred gate, which can be opened when needed. You can't go through it, obviously, but you can see through it, big spaces between bars. Get out of my car to open my porch gate. Yes, I don't have an automatic porch gate. Don't ask why. As I am opening the gate, feel something to my left. Turn around, see this big ass black dog just staring dead at me. It was not even panting, just staring at me. It was barely visible due to shitty street lights. Stare at him for about a minute. Decide to get my ass back in the car. Get car into the porch then go out to see if he's still there. Gone. Poop my pants a little. Close the gate as fast as possible. Get into my room and into bed. As I'm falling asleep, hear long howl in the distance. 
shitbricks.pdf Struggle to get some sleep. My brother saw that dog again about two months later, and maybe you'll think this is bullshit, but he was listening to Black Dog too. I'm sure it was just a coincidence, but a scary one nonetheless.